Hi, I'm Gary Lanier, and welcome to Boss Tone Video. We're here at Sunset Lodge Recording Studio in Hollywood, California, and today we're joined by legendary guitarist Marty Friedman. How you doing, Marty? Pretty good. How you doing, Gary? Good, good. Good to see you again. Hi, great to see you too. Your playing style is very unique and melodic. Uh, the way you select and bend notes is really uncommon. Tell us about your influences aside from rock and roll. When I first started, I was you know, playing really a lot like Kiss when I was a little kid. I wanted to challenge myself more and more, and uh, I started to be listening to foreign music and instruments other than guitar. You know, when I was a teenager, I would listen to like violin or the Chinese violin type of things, and uh, that allowed me to uh, kind of subliminally decide that um, I don't have to do guitar phrasing all the time and phrase more like a vocalist might phrase. By doing that, my playing winds up sounding unorthodox. I've had the pleasure of doing a recording session with you in my former band. I noticed at that time that you have a very interesting picking technique. Tell us about that. You know what, I really don't know anything about it other than when I see pictures from when I was a kid, like 16 years old, I was doing it then too. And that's all subliminal, I just like the sound of a rich full note. So when my hand is like this, it's not muting, it's actually as far away from the strings as possible to allow the strings to ring as much as they can. Of course, it looks stupid as crap. <laughs> That's cool. It's cool. It's different. In the 80s, a number of guitarists such as you, Jason Becker, uh, Steve Vai, began making music without vocals. In a sense, rock and roll guitar became its own voice. Uh, why do you think that happened? I think a good vocalist wouldn't want to sing in front of all that crazy guitar playing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was a, like a great singer, the last thing I'd want to be doing is standing in front of the two guitar players blazing their asses off. So that's the only uh, logical explanation that I can think of. And um, I'm not a fan of instrumental music, really. Um, but when I make it, I make it to the criteria of this has to be just as fun to listen to as something with a great vocal on it. And that's pretty much the ultimate challenge as a musician or a guitar player. If somebody listens to my stuff and say, wow, the guitar player is great, that's fine, but like, that is the farthest thing from my mind when I'm trying to make this stuff. You joined Megadeth in 1990 and recorded five multi-platinum records with them. Was that a shift for you at that time, musically? Um, musically, yeah, it was, it was kind of like what I was doing way before that, when I was in, in a band called Hawaii. It was like really kind of fast thrash metal with a lot of intense guitar breaks and stuff. So I was really happy to do that music in a format where it was done properly and professionally. You know, when I was in Hawaii, you know, we'd record a whole album in two weeks on an A-track, you know, and it just wouldn't be the proper, you know, recording facility or anything. So Megadeth was like, it was a joy to, uh, to play in that band. For as long as I've known you, you speak Japanese fluently and now live in Tokyo. Tell us about the music and TV you're doing in Japan. Yeah, it's, it's really insane. I moved to Japan because I just love Japanese current pop music. When I say pop music, it means the ultimate heaviest metal to the ultimate poppiest pop. And uh, when I got over there, I started playing in the bands of my favorite singers. I was very lucky. And then I was asked to do a TV show, which I had zero interest in. I just wanted to play music, and it became a hit right away. I immediately got picked up by the biggest management team in Japan, and ever since I've done, like probably since then, I'm maybe 600 TV shows. Oh, wow. And maybe half of them have to do with music. Half, the other half are nothing to do with music. Even though it takes a lot of time and energy to do TV and stuff and do various musical projects in Japan, I find that um, it's just such a healthy influence to my own music, so I'm willing to do the, the extra work. All right, let's talk about gear. Mm -hmm. You've used a lot of Boss guitar products, such as the GT6, GT8, uh, GS10. Um, how have you used those multi-FX processors? One, the first thing that pops to mind is, especially doing a lot of TV in Japan, sometimes it won't be like a concert setting. I'll be on the panel, and it might be a variety show or a comedy show, and there might be a little section where there's a little place where I have to play some guitar or do a little jam or something. Those times I had the GS10, I believe it was, and it's, you just plug it in and go. There's no sound check, there's no setting up, there's no miking. Engineers love it, it's easy to deal with, you can show up and get the stuff done right away. And I used the thing to do full-on concerts. I did a whole entire tour in Japan with the GS10. Of course, it's a different sound than your amp going, you don't have the air moving. Um, but sometimes that sound fits in with the other sounds 
even better than an amp, and it's easier to control in different musical environments. So uh, it was a very, very helpful thing, that GS10. So now you're currently using the Boss Micro BR80 digital recorder. Tell us about that. I'm just using it for like the presets and um, just for a lot of funky sounds that can find their way within the actual amp sounds to create a complete landscape. Sometimes the simulator sounds tend to peak out, stick out more than another amp on top of another amp on top of another amp. It's kind of like a secret thing. Every time I do it with a new engineer, they're like, wow, nobody's ever done that. The main point I want to make is people say simulators sound like simulators. I wouldn't use them for the real thing. But I'm telling there's a song called Viper. The song is Viper. Listen to it off loudspeaker. My main solo, the longest solo. Actually, I'm dueling with Steve Vai in that song. And uh, the solo that I'm dueling with Steve Vai in, I'm using the, the GT as the actual tone. So um, it's real. I mean, the simulator, if you stick it in the right place, it can be as good or better than amp sounds with no problem. So now you're in Hollywood recording a new record. Uh, is the music similar to your last release, uh, Tokyo Jukebox 2, which is uh, very J-pop, J-rock, um, or is this something different? This new album that I'm working on right now is called Inferno. It's taken about five times more planning than anything I've ever done before. and uh, I want it to be kind of a landmark in my career. I mean, it's similar to Tokyo Jukebox in the way that I'm playing my ass off as usual, but um, I wanted to just take the intensity of all of my stuff and just kick it up about a thousand notches. It's the absolute sickest thing I've ever done. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. It's definitely not commercial. <laughs> it's definitely just me being as sick as I possibly could ever be. Everything that people probably would hope that I would have done will be done in spades on this record. Marty, what would you say to aspiring musicians that are looking to make a living in music? There's a lot of creative ways to make a living in music, but my advice to you is be truly honest with yourself about what you like to do in music. After you've played like two or three years your instrument, then you can see all of the different layers of the music business, and all of them are fantastic. Some people are great luthiers, and some people are great techs, and some people are great on the gear side of things. People who know about gear are just the absolute bomb to me because I know zero about it. And when I see somebody dealing with gear and making my stuff sound good, I'm like, this is the shit, I love this. That's my best advice. Look, there's a lot of things other than just playing the instrument. Marty, I appreciate you taking the time today. I'm sorry if I talk too much. <laughs> oh, it's great, thank you, yeah. thanks again. Yeah. And thank you for tuning in to Boss Tone Video. We'll Boss. see you soon. Boss. <laughs>